They say juggling is one of the basics. But why do we have to do it? Do I have to? Does juggling really improve your skills? How should I practice? If you watch this video and follow along, all the previous questions will be solved quickly. Especially if you follow the way I tell you, you will be able to master juggling. And you'll find yourself out of the soccer novice and a little bit more proficient at playing soccer. Even if it's not, you will feel that your soccer skills will improve due to better control and kick. Why juggling? The purpose of juggling is to increase the number of touches to the ball per unit time and increase the sense of the ball. So that the ball touch and control are refined and skilled in various situations in soccer. And how much can you play soccer in youth or amateur soccer teams? It is also a simple measure of how much sense and sense you have in soccer. According to my experience, if you juggle a lot and do well, the ball control is definitely soft and kick. So you can control the ball that flies strongly. In addition, various non-stop shots and non-stop passes are improved. And the sensitivity is noticeably improved. If you relax your body with juggling for about 10 to 20 minutes before a soccer game, the body will be heated and the nervous system will adapt, allowing you to perform your best performance right after entering the stadium with your sense of the ball at its peak. Also, juggling before the game can be used as a way to check the condition of the day. Ah, today, I have a good sense of fit, or I don't have a good sense of fit. Something like that. Juggling tutorial. First of all, the core of this tutorial is to gradually increase the difficulty by practicing repeatedly by lowering the difficulty of the task and lowering the degree of freedom, just like learning all exercises. The first training is to hold the ball and hit it on the top of the foot. This practice may seem too easy, but I think it's necessary for those who are learning juggling for the first time. Because when I first taught juggling, there were many students who didn't know where to guess at all. So at first, if you hold the ball in your hand and practice hitting it like poking it on the top of your foot, you can feel that the ball hits you indirectly. So the specific purpose of this exercise is to get used to feeling the impact area accurately and straightening the top of your foot. The first step is only about 10 minutes on the first day. The second is to use your hands to kick, hold, and hold. It is recommended that you wear both feet alternately. At this level, it is important to feel a clean feeling that the ball is accurately impacted on the top of the foot and bounced off, so the ball should not spin. To do so, you have to straighten the top of your foot as long as the range of motion allows, place the ball on the top of your foot exactly and kick it in a direction perpendicular to the ground, and you have to bend your back and kick it in a slightly uncomfortable position as you can see. In fact, Elite athletes and professional people don't juggle awkwardly as they look with their backs bent. But at this stage, it's a necessary position to put the ball on the top of your foot. The second step is 10 minutes every day from the start, and I think we can go to the next step in about a week. To go to the next step, you should not move much when you think of it yourself, but you can juggle it in place, and it fits exactly in the center of the ball so that the ball does not rotate. The third is to practice juggling with both feet after a bound. Likewise, when you kick the ball up, you have to kick it in a direction perpendicular to the ground to make it easier to kick the next ball. Kick the ball up when it bounces to the ground and falls from the apex. Likewise, it is important to spread the top of your foot as much as possible and make an impact so that the ball does not spin. The third step is also 10 minutes a day from the start, about a week to the next step. The fourth is to use your hands to kick and hold both feet once. It is recommended that you do not use your right foot or left foot only to start the first juggling, but alternately use both feet. At this stage, stretch your feet as far as you can and juggle them in a slightly uncomfortable position. Now that you're juggling continuously with your cheeks floating, you can say that you've almost mastered juggling if you actually master this step. I practiced with the idea that one foot passes the next foot and the front foot tries to make it easier for the next foot to kick. After all, juggling is a series of accurate touches. Now there is virtually no next step at this stage. 
because if you get used to catching two cars, the next step is to catch three cars and then catch four cars. If you keep practicing for 10 minutes every day, there will be a lot of improvement. But if I have to divide it into more steps, the fifth step is to practice more intensively on the weak feet. This is a one-footed approach, so it's important to take a quick 1-2-3 alternating step after the kick. In that way, it is also a good way to intensively supplement the weak feet. And the next step, the master step, is to kick comfortably. If you've practiced all the previous steps, it's easy to understand what I'm saying and there are many people who are already doing this. At first, I told you that you have to straighten the top of your foot as much as your joints allow. Straighten your feet, bend your back, and kick the ball in an uncomfortable position, right? But if you kept practicing, you probably felt very uncomfortable with that posture. So you might be juggling professionals and elite players, as I'm showing you now. How is it? Yes, that's right. The waist doesn't bend that much, relaxes the body, and crucially doesn't stretch the top of the foot as much as possible, and the ball takes a little reverse rotation. In common sense, the ball will be disrupted in the future if the leg angle does not extend the top of the foot from that angle and the ball does not reverse. If you want to pull the ball towards your body to juggle, of course you have to kick it with a reverse spin. I think kicking in an uncomfortable position and then turning back in this comfortable position is a natural process of change, like a spectrum without distinction, rather than a special step or step-by-step -step development. So at first, you make an impact exactly so that the ball doesn't spin in an uncomfortable position, but the more you learn it over and over again, the more you lose strength in your body, so the ball naturally changes to a comfortable position with a slight reverse rotation. After all, the most important thing is repeated practice. I have to make it completely mine through repeated practice to help with ball control and kick during the game. Do repetitive practice anywhere within the house, parking lot, playground, or park to the extent that it is not harmful. I'll be rooting for you. Application. Often, juggling means repeatedly kicking the ball with the top of the foot alternately up with both feet. But like the meaning of lift, you can do it with inside, outside, knees, chest, and head. The chest will be difficult, but you will be able to master the rest of the movements if you practice it repeatedly by lowering the difficulty of the task like you did by holding or bounding it with your hands at first. Outro. What do you think? Now you know how to juggle and how to train, right? However, if you don't train after understanding it, it doesn't have much effect. Practice slowly but steadily for 10 minutes every day to master juggling. And I hope you become a player who can be recognized and contribute to your team. I will talk about soccer in detail with better videos from now on. Thank you for watching the long video. Have a happy day.